Hello, I'm Vadim. I'm an IT specialist here at Nagios. In today's Jumpstart, I'll be showing you how you could quickly get Nagios log server running and configured in a few steps. Let's get started. Right when you log in, you could find some metrics that you're currently monitoring. On the home page, you could find unique hosts, active alerts, and instances. This lets you know how many hosts are being logged, what is being logged, what alerts are being sent out, and how many log server instances you have. Below that, you can find the number of logs that are being recorded, as well as the disk usage. To the right of that, we could find a quick way to start adding logs from Windows, Linux, network devices, or other types of logs. Right under that, you could find total disk usage, as well as dashboards and queries. Now, we can add a network device such as switches, routers, IP cameras, or any network connected device. In this example, I'll be adding an IP camera and a Windows Server to start logging. To add an IP camera, you want to click on Add Log Source. Then you will select Network Device. I'll be adding a generic IP address, but if you have a Cisco or Juniper device, in these tabs you could find configuration steps for these types of devices. You'll use this log server IP and hostname, and you'll use the TCP and UDP port. You then want to go to the device and log in. In the settings, you should find a log tab. You will want to add a server. You will enter the hostname or IP address of your log server. You will change the protocol to UDP. As well as matching the port number, which should be 5544. You can customize severity as you need. Then click save and return back to log server and enter in the device IP address and click verify. You should see that it has been verified and there are 426 logs for the host 10.10.2020. The next step is to add a Windows Server. You could add another log source on the top. Then you want to select Windows. You will need to download an X log located here. This is what sends logs back to Log Server. During the installation, make sure to select Program Files x86. If not, the application will not function properly. When installing the program, make sure to select Program Files 86 and add a folder called NX Log. Make sure you have this path and press OK. You should see Program Files 86 and X Log. Click Next and Install. After installing, you want to go back to Log Server. You will then want to select the entire script and paste it into our new configuration file. This script already has everything your computer or device might need to start sending logs. We'll go into folders, this PC, local disk C, program files 86, we'll find NX log, then we can find C1F config, and the config file right here. 
We could open in Notepad. You will then delete everything in this config file and paste in the script that was given by Log Server. And click Save. After we have saved that file, you want to go to CMD or Command Prompt, then type in net start nx log and click enter. The service should start. You'll get this message saying that it started. While we're here, we'll type in ipconfig. We can find our IP address and we copy this into log server. So we go back to log server and down at the bottom, we can verify that IP address. and click verify. And once we click verify, we see that there are 492 logs that have been found for that host. The next thing you should look into is creating custom filters going into log server. You could do this by going to dashboards. And below that, you could find a query and you could put in anything, let's just say target, And we can see the chart and events have changed, which on the right side, you could add the plus and add stopped. Here, we get two custom filters. You could also filter these by events with the default fields on the left side. So we could select ID, the version number, then we could select severity, and priority. If we would like to save this graph, we go to the top and we click save here, or you could save as my custom graph. And on the left side, we could see that the dashboard has saved and it has changed my name to my custom graph. You could also configure the graph by clicking this gear icon and on the left side, you could find style and you could deselect bars and select lines and points and click save. This will change the graph and you will see a different representation of the same graph. Then we could reference this graph anytime we go to home and go back to dashboards. We could see that it has Reset our graph, and to find our graph, we load in our custom graph. The next thing we want to do is set up alerts. So the first thing we have to do is go to the alerting tab on the top and select create a new alert. In the name, we could type in error 404. We could leave it as query the Apache 404 years. And for the check intervals, you can do anything custom such as seconds, minutes, hours, or days. In my example, I'll do 5M, which is five minutes. The look back period will also be five minutes. And the threshold is the number of events. For a warning, I'll do one. And for a critical, I'll do three. You could take the ownership of this alert by clicking take ownership, and this will show that it has been created by you. Here we could see a new alert of error 404 has been created by me, and it has never run, and the status is pending. So what we wanna do is click run the alert now, and we could see that it tested the alert on this time and it says OK. In the actions, you could also find show alert in dashboard, deactivate this alert, edit the alert, or remove. You could also add a notification method using an RDP, execute script, send SNMP trap, or email users. You could select different users that are part of Nagios log server. And you could also have a custom email template. After that, save changes. 
and you can see the notification method has changed right here. Lastly, the best idea would be to set up a repository to capture the log data and send to a different folder or a different device. To find this, you will need to go to Admin. Here you want to add a repository. You want to click Create Repository. You give it a name, Backup, Repo, and you specify the repository location. You click Add. And here you could find a bunch of snapshots. You could see that we have added backup repo, its location, file system, and size. On the left side, we could optimize indexes that are older than two days. We can close indexes that are more than 15 days. And we could delete indexes over 60 days. You could optimize any of these, such as deleting indexes, you could put zero, so it will never delete. Next, you could store the repository snapshots in this folder. You could delete the snapshots older than 720 days. You will click Enable Maintenance and Snapshots, and then click Save Settings. You'll see that maintenance settings have been updated and everything is successful. Adding another instance provides data redundancy so that all the data exists in more than one place at any given time. If you'd like to add an additional instance of log server to form a cluster, you'll need to set up a new log server instance. Then during the final installation steps, you will click Connect. It will ask for the IP address or host name and the cluster ID, where you could find in the main log server instance, where we could find the IP address on the top. And we could find the cluster ID located in the admin tab then go to cluster status. We'll find cluster ID on the right side. We will copy this cluster ID and we'll paste it right in here and click connect to cluster. After that is added, you will see that the installation was complete. And if we go back to our main log server, we will see we have added another instance. And there you have it. I hope this has helped you get started with Log Server so you can stay on top of all your log data. If you've enjoyed this video, consider looking at our YouTube channel for more helpful videos, and I'll see you in the next one.